everyone to come to the Art Talk of Hackspace today. My name is Carmen from the K11 at Foundation. Today we are very happy to invite a guest to do a conversation of Hackspace. So let me pass the mic to Dutlux from the K11 at Foundations to start the Art Talk today. Hey, thank you everyone. Uh, my name is Douglas, I represent the K11 Art Foundation, and thank you and welcome to the um, talk today. Um, before we go into really start the conversation with all our guests before um, that, uh, let me give you a very brief introduction about the K11 Art Foundation and what we have been doing uh, in the past. Uh, the Art Foundation, K11 Art Foundation, was founded by Adrian in 2010, so that was like almost six years ago, and with three, two very simple mission. One is to incubate young contemporary Chinese artists and curators, and also to do more public art education. And through all our collaborations with uh, international museums and institutions, like Serbian Galleries, and before with the ICA, Palais Tokyo, etc., uh, we're trying to use this platform uh, in order to you know, bring our Chinese artists and talents uh, to a more global audience. And that's a way of how we want to incubate them. And the other way is also uh, our art village uh, in Wuhan, where we have 11 studios uh, for young artists to really work and live there, uh, to really facilitate a sort of um, a dialogue between these young artists as well. And obviously we do have uh, curators and artists that are coming in uh, for exchange with our artists at Art Village. So I mean, we are very honored and happy to, ha you know, to work with the uh, Serpentine Gallery this year uh, with uh, Hans Ulrich, a director of the Serpentine Galleries and a co-curator for the show, and also uh, Amira Gat here with us, the co-curator of the show as well. Uh, they will be talking uh, about you know, the, the show and then how we work together and also you know, introduce other artists uh, in, the, in the show and you know, have the conversation from there. Thank you very much. Douglas, Douglas, thank you very, very much. And thank you all for being here. And of course, all our thanks go to all the artists present here for making possible this extraordinary uh, experience, this extraordinary exhibition. Um, I would like to start by actually uh, uh, thanking again K11, uh, Adrian Cheng, the, the founder, and the extraordinary team of, uh, um, of K11. Uh, of course, Douglas, Carmen, Priscilla, Boy, Anson, Wendy, Grace, Maggie, Bonnie, Jilly, and uh, everybody else. We really believe this has been an extraordinary experience. And Serpentine Galleries plus K11 is clearly one plus one equals 11. So it even rhymes. So in any case, um, uh, foremost, we would like to thank also the, the artists. And I will tell you a few things about how this exhibition actually was born. Uh, it all started with um, <coughs> an exhibition of uh, Simon Denny in, um, uh, in London at the Serpentine, where we basically um, uh, invited Simon uh, for his first uh, exhibition in uh, a UK public uh, institution. And it all started with conversations with Simon, where Simon told us that something that always seems relevant is how changes in technology displace experience and space. As Simon told us, he is a fan of the way artists experience and reflect on those changes. The experience of change through technology is something constant. So the idea was to develop an exhibition which would um, reflect that. Uh, of course, um, uh, based on many previous works of Simon, like his new management in 2014, where he looked on the impact of, uh, and through Samsung in 2015, the Secret Power exhibition, uh, the New Zealand Pavilion of the 56 uh, Venice Biennale, where actually um, he analyzed something Adam Curtis often points out, that in the digital age, very often power seems to disappear, but it's not that it disappears, it's just that it's often invisible. So that was what secret power uh, was about, and it connected, of course, to architecture, to a palazzo at San Marco, and also to the architecture of the airport. And that happened also with the exhibition at, um, at the Serpentine Sackler Gallery, where Simon developed two large-scale installations, dividing the Sackler equally, um, actually uh, looking at technological organizational models in both hacker circles and also in commercial companies. First of all, in one part of the space, the history of, of hacking, and it's kind of interesting that this very important aspect, hacking is all about sharing, as Simon often says, it's all about um, openness, 
um, that this history of hacking uh, is very little known. So it was also, in a way, uh, a protest against forgetting. It had to do with memory. And you know, we often think in an age where we have so many uh, informations that maybe um, memory increases. But it might actually be that amnesia is kind of at the core of this digital age. And when we looked at all these materials about hacking and how much had already been forgotten, um, it became very clear that this memory work through art and artists is very important. On the other side of the building, you had the government communication headquarters, the GCHQ, and also commercial high-tech companies like Zappos and Apple, where you can actually see how many aspects, you know, which uh, Simon analyzed on the other side of the building, play a role in these organizations, that all of a sudden you have this you know, openness and in a way also sharing. Uh, uh, also in these companies, you have actually also the idea that um, vertical management disappears and you have a kind of a horizontal holacracy. Um, so that was somehow the structure of this uh, exhibition. We then started a dialogue, I mean, this dialogue started already several years ago with Adrian about how we could collaborate and what we could do together. Uh, and it all of a sudden became clear that it would be very, very fascinating to actually bring this exhibition uh, to Hong Kong, uh, uh, where it would connect, of course, to a completely different history of the digital, a completely different history of hacking. Um, and in a way, uh, the idea also that the exhibition would evolve and change. And you know, our uh, deep interest in uh, Chinese art uh, started a long time ago at the Serpentine, of course, in 2006 with the China Power Station, which we curated with Julia Peyton Johns and uh, Gunnar Kwaran when we uh, basically inhabited the little Serpentine, inhabited that gigantic uh, um, uh, Battersea Power Station, one of London's <coughs> landmark buildings, one of the biggest buildings, by actually curating an exhibition of Chinese art on the premises of uh, of, of Battersea. Uh, but in a way, the story goes further back, actually, to 1996. Uh, I came to Hong Kong for the first time in spring 96, so exactly 20 years ago, um, with my colleague Hu Han Ru, in order to make research for Cities on the Move, an exhibition where we looked at the mutation of uh, Asian cities, an exhibition which subsequently toured after the Vienna Secession, where it started in 96 through eight different cities, uh, mostly in Europe. Uh, I went to Bordeaux, went to the Louisiana Museum, et cetera, et cetera, went to London. But it also toured to New York City, and uh, last but not least, it ended in Bangkok, uh, where basically it became part of the urban fabric. It left the museum and became a form of curating as urbanism, which very much is something also Simon, of course, is interested in. What this exhibition did in 1996 was not only look at the amazing, you know, art in Asia in the 1990s, but it looked also at an exhibition model which was all about openness and sharing, in this sense, hacking. Um, an exhibition model which would evolve from city to city, um, because we felt that exhibitions, you know, when you tour an exhibition which goes from one city to the next, uh, there is something very homogenizing about that. It's also very arrogant, you know, why would an exhibition which happens in London be relevant in, in Hong Kong? needs to be a different you know, exhibition. It needs to listen to the local context. It needs to evolve. It needs to change. And that's where this wonderful collaboration with K11 came even more to fruition, because of course, K11 um, has in an exemplary way, ever since it was founded, uh, uh, as Douglas explained uh, six years ago, done uh, a very deep research into the generation of the millennials uh, in China, uh, done a really great cartography an encyclopedic cartography, we could say, of this amazing generation of artists, uh, you know, who, um, of course, in many different ways, you know, connect to the digital world. And uh, as far as I understand, I haven't seen it yet. I'm going to see it on uh, on Saturday. There is a big exhibition right now of K11 in Shanghai, uh, where 60, uh, more than 60 artists of the, you know, research of K11, Chinese artists of the millennial generation, are being presented. So we thought it would be absolutely wonderful to actually connect to this archive of uh, K11 and together with Simon make a research here to see who are the artists who, mo who mo might most uh, be interested in similar topics and how we could somehow evolve the exhibition in the dialogue with artists in, in China. So we made a series of uh, studio visits uh, facilitated and organized by, by K11. And it's of course not the first time 
Um, I've, you know, visited studios in China. I've been there 35, 40 times, you know, before. But it was indeed the opening, you know, to a new generation, uh, and and that was very exciting. And also, as Amira and I discussed earlier today, it's very unusual, you know, for us as curators. We visit artists every day. We have a, a daily practice of, of visiting studios. That's, you know, what we do. But it's very unusual to visit studios with an artist, and it was very fascinating to to all these studio visits with Simon um, uh, uh, in Shanghai, you know, in Beijing, and then here. Uh, and he produced a whole other archive because we, I mean, I recorded all the conversations as I always would for the oral, you know, kind of history uh, on which I'm working on. And at the same time, Simon drew every single studio visit. So there is so much material from the artists, from us, you know, that obviously there is a necessity for a big book. Uh, but we have published for the occasion of today a pamphlet, a folder, two actually two folders, one on, uh, um, on Simon's work related to the London exhibition and how we toured here, and the other one related to all the artists we invited from China to participate. So uh, we hope that you can all get a copy of that and then the big book um, will follow later involving all these elements. The last one I wanted to make is about the, the architecture. Amira and I were discussing a lot in the process of you know, curating this exhibition together, how important it is to connect to this different space here. And it is obviously very important because Simon's work is always connected to architecture. He is fascinated by architecture. He is a, uh, a student, former student of the Städelschule, uh, the greatest, one of the greatest art schools in the world, where obviously, you know, like in the old days, art and architecture are not separated. It's a big, big tragedy that art and architecture very often are separated in art schools today. Um, because this idea, this, I always explained the amazing success of the Schädelschule by the mere fact that architecture was not separated from, from art, that you have there an architecture class. And when I was there as a baby curator 20 years earlier, because I'm also kind of a product of the Schädelschule, working with Kaspar König, you know, the late Cedric Price was there, the late Enric Miralles was there, and I learned everything about architecture somehow there. And of course, Simon, you know, coming out, being one of the great protagonists of that Städelschule miracle, in a way, you know, and it's wonderful that Nikolaus here, she's actually here with us, uh, the former director and architect uh, of uh, the Städelschule. So it's not by coincidence, of course, that Simon always connects to, to architecture. And it was incredible how he uh, dealt with the space in, in London, no? using the Serpentine Sackler Gallery, adding a scaffolding with architect Alessandro Bava, so suddenly you could see the space from above, enabling, facilitating a completely different experience. Yet at the same time here, using the space of the K11, this sort of pop-up space of K11, which is actually not at all a white cube, as you can see, it's a former kind of former real estate presentation kind of commercial office and Simon did want to keep vestiges, fragments of this former use and actually use the exhibition architecture also, how the real estate models used to be presented here by stacking you know, the models and in a way that's also another very interesting connection to cities on the move where actually Rem Cole has recycled an exhibition architecture of Zaha Hadid by stacking her vitrines. So in a way, you know, this idea of artists inventing a display feature, right? it's something Marcel Duchamp once said, we mainly remember exhibition which also, um, you know, invent a new display feature, like in the Surrealist show where he had the ropes, no, all the ropes. So um, uh, these just a few, you know, introductory uh, remarks. We are, of course, incredibly grateful to all the amazing artists. Amira is now going to tell us more about uh, the participants, about the different works in the exhibition. We will then have dialogues with all the artists in the show. And all our gratitude goes, of course, to Simon, to Ajayo, to Chao Fei, to Chue Chie, to Guo Chi, to Hu Ching Tai, to Firenze Lai, to Li Liao, to Liang, to Liang Shuo, to Tao Hui, to Chu Su, and to Zai Liang. Please give a very, very warm welcome to all these great artists. <laughs> and I now hand over to Amira Gad. A very warm welcome to Amira Gad. <laughs> 
thanks so much, uh, Hans Ulrich, for this great introduction. And yes, I would also like to extend my thanks to all the artists participating in this exhibition. As Hans Ulrich already mentioned, we were never, um, we don't believe in a touring exhibition that can be staged as it was. And it's always a matter of uh, considering the context in which the show is taking place and drawing themes from, as Hans Ulrich already mentioned, uh, Simon Denny's Serpentine exhibition, which was called Products for Organizing, and took place between November and February this year. So what was interesting to us is to see how we could use this as a foundation in developing our conversation together with the K11 Art Foundation, and also try to feed into this the research that has been conducted with um, from all these studio visits between Hans Ulrich and Simon and the different artists that are included in this show. So all of these conversations actually basically fed and resulted into the show that you're in uh, now, the one that we're talking about, Hackspace. So um, looking at the different artists that have been selected, um, we're also very grateful basically for their openness and their collaboration for sometimes presenting their works in an unconventional way, we could say, um, in terms of agreeing to present some of their works on these pedestals, which um, was also another idea in terms of the layout and the design of this exhibition, in terms of how do we bring together in the context of a group show within this space, a harmony and a look and a feel and a design that can um, create different associations from one work to the next. And, um, Simon Denny, who's well right here, thought of these pedestals that were presented or being used in a previous display that was included in this space, and he has basically repurposed them for the context of this show. So in a way, there is also the history of how this space has been used in the past that's coming back into here. That you know, what we're trying to do with this show, Hackspace, is not ignore or, um, or take into consideration the type of space that it is and work with it and not try to work against it. So in that sense, it's also great gratitude that we have for um, the artists that's, um, I mean, one example is Jai Liang for agreeing to present a framed work on a pedestal and the many um, other um, artists that are included. Um, I think uh, I will mention a couple of works that are included in the exhibition and then uh, we'll pass on also the mics to the artists who are sitting here. But for instance, we um, um, are also presenting a, a kind of a new formation of works by Li Liao, who is uh, um, well, it's part of a larger installation that's also included in the show, and then he has also agreed to kind of refashion this particular installation for the show. We're also presenting for the first time a representation of a longer-term project that Agile has done, um, which was called Xin Dan Wei, and uh, this includes um, a, wall, um, a, a wall piece, which you'll see that is right behind you, and uh, a documentation of this kind of three-year um, working community that has done. Now, just a few information about the artists who are joining us. I mean, starting from um, the right, we have Jai Liang, who's from Shanxi in, yeah. <laughs> in China. Um, his work has also been um, included in the Long Museum collection in Shanghai. Um, and then next to him is Agile. So the artist behind the work that's called Poor Mining that revolves around Bitcoin. And then the other work that's included in the show is Xin Danwei, uh, one company also uh, part of a longer uh, term project which revolved around creating the first co-working space in China which lasted for three years and then that was closed down and they'll tell us more about it. Then, of course, Simon Denny. <laughs> uh, artist from New Zealand who represented New Zealand at the Venice Biennale um, and also uh, part of the brains behind this operation and a great conversation partner in terms of the development of this show. And next to him we have Xu Xiye. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, Xu Xiye. <laughs> sorry. Um, who's, uh, who's a painter, and again, we're presenting in this exhibition uh, her paintings on these um, industrial look, um, type poles in order um, to kind of hang her 
paintings, another thing that you haven't done in the past. Her painting practice incorporates um, expressionist and expressionist take on contemporary Chinese art and thinking about the country's uh, urban landscape. And then next to her is uh, Li Liao and um, the, his work uh, that uh, is called Consumption and it's from 2012 and that work is the result of a self-imposed internship at uh, Foxconn where he worked for 45 days in order to raise enough funds for him to buy himself an iPad um, 16 gigs. Um, and I'm not, I'm not going to say any more than that, but I think we can um, definitely move forward and pass on the floor to Simon Denny to say a few words about Hack Space and his experience. And then I'd love to um, hear more from each artist to tell us about their work included in the show. Thank you very much, Amira. Thank you very much to the K11 Foundation and to Hans Ulrich and to exactly all the artists um, who have just been Introduced to, um, I just want to say uh, something about the central concept of the show for me, um, which was in London and is now here, which is the idea of hacking and what hacking means to me. So um, to me, hacking is very simply um, the kind of unconventional way of problem solving uh, things uh, uh, that sort of questions at the same time as making a solution. And uh, the conditions for uh, a kind of hack process um, uh, uh, that is central to the kind of values of hacking are uh, openness, um, radical flexibility, sharing, and, uh, and exchange, and kind of an openness to learning. And I think uh, the spirit of that um, has been everything about uh, this exhibition preparation process for me. So it's being open to making an exhibition in a space which is not designed for showing artwork in, it's, um, it's, it's, making, uh, it's an openness to learning about practices and thinking processes which are new to me and understanding other ways of thinking about the world and other ways of thinking about technology. Um, and it's about kind of a resonance uh, with a density of information and a density of kind of urban space that is endemic to this city and, um, and to my experience of, uh, of making this exhibition. Um, so I just want to say thank you to everybody for following those principles <laughs> of openness, flexibility, and adaptation in order to kind of uh, shortcut and come up with a system which is um, unusual, but also uh, generative and kind of genuinely new. Uh, so thank, thank, you, thank you. Thank you very much, Simon. Can you maybe tell us a little bit more about the, the architecture? Because in a way, it seems very interesting how much you know, the architecture changed in comparison, you know, to London, how you reacted um, to the space here. It would be great to hear a little bit more about that. Right, so we're sitting in the base of a tower um, and uh, it's a very, very tall building and it's a beautiful building. Um, and when I first was presented the exhibition space, I came in here and saw what was the kind of remnants of a display that was going to show some buildings that were being built uh, by um, uh, a, an associated group to the K11 Foundation that Adrian's also involved in. So this pedestals, which I then uh, repurposed for this exhibition that you see kind of chopped up into little sections in the show and holding the works of the other artists, were kind of coming together to hold a model of buildings to be built. And I found that really compelling. I found the space compelling. I found the fact that it's sort of almost underground and almost in a kind of a, uh, the, the, the kind of a basement of a huge tower, amazing. And the fact that there's little kind of display areas uh, with branding on it and kind of a, an amazing way of entering and, and a, an elevator and a, and, a, and a behind space and a toilet space, an amazing kind of area um, to use. And I wanted to kind of keep all of that information in here but to kind of uh, uh, make a kind of a skyline out of it. Um, so to kind of suggest that the, the building and the repurposing of space, indeed the hacking of space that is done by urban development um, in the display itself. Um, so that's the kind of idea. Thanks, Simon. I mean, um, Agile, uh, one of the interesting things about your biography is also the fact that you mentioned that you're born in 1984 and that this coincides with George Orwell's book. And I really do love the fact that you include that in your bio. But I wonder if you could also talk some more about your experience of setting up Xindan Wei and also say a few words about your work for mining. Uh, uh, 
那个真正的一件一个一个公一个公司，我们是在二零零九年开始做的。我们是中国的，就是我觉得应该是包包括香港地区，我们应该是第一家那个 coking space 的公司。然后在做这件公，就是做这个公司的时候，我们真的是当做一个所谓的社社会创新企业在经营它的。但是到了一三年的时候，我们关掉了所有的就在上海的三三家公司。然后在这个差不多四四年的一个跨度里面，我们做了差不多三百场的活动，就包括 work， 就是这些工作坊，包括这个讨论会，包括一些小型的展览。然后也也是在这四年里面，我们差不多形成了一个两万人的线下人线下的社区。然后我们获得的在商业上的一个非常重要的荣誉是我们是 Fast Company 纽就是纽约版，呃，二零一二年这个中国最创新的十家企业，我们是第十名，第一名是腾讯。所以这个，但是当我们一三年把它停止之后，就是我们回看这个我们做的这件事儿，回归到我的艺术家的身份，我觉得它只能当做一做一个作作品。它作为一个公司的话，其实我觉得，呃，是一个非常失败的。一个事件，原因是我觉得在中国的区域其实并不存在一个真正的写作，也不存在一个呃自由职业者的这样的文文化，所以它只能回归成一件作品最终出现。然后回到这个展览，我觉得为什么它最终会出现？我觉得它是一个非常好的事例，原因是大家都知道，呃，在这一两年，整个呃中中国区域在推崇一种创新跟一个创业，其实我们在这。就是其实新单位是在这件事上的一个非常早的尝试，而且我们又以很乌托邦的方式做了它四年，所以再出现，我觉得它有很讽刺的意味，但是也有很好的一个示意，就是这是一个现象，然后这个现象其实也在这个展览里有了一个相对的结论。I wanted to ask you also to tell us about the second piece in the show because. The very beginning, when Simon and I met you, we were very, very fascinated by you, your connection to Bitcoin,、uh, and having you know talked a lot to Vitalik Buterin in the past, you're extremely interested in that, and、um, uh, we we're wondering if you can tell us a little bit about poor mining because it's actually a very early piece to to deal with Bitcoin,、uh, totally. and and so it's futuristic yet at the same time it also looks like a, an archaeology of something. <laughs> it looks both very new and very old. 呃，就是这这件穷人采矿是确实是蛮早的，是二零一一年做的一件跟比特币相关的作品。其实真正比特币回到一个公众的视野，要到一三年年年底，甚至是一四年年初了。我一一年做它，就是因为我深入了解过它的基础结构之后，我觉得这是一个非常有欺骗性的，呃，基于互联网的看似公平的一一套是那个货币系统。但我觉得这样的。呃，系统的出现和我对互联网的认识是相冲突的，所所以我觉得就是说这件作品的出现也是一个讽刺。我觉得就是说，或者说是我的一个预预预言。我觉得它呃可能会变得更流行，但是它带来的效果并不是完全正面的，而且它是对我来说是很影响，就是它也不要影响，就是它是违反我对互联网一个公平。跟他的一个更广泛性的一种认认识的，所以做了这件作品。所以回到展览，我觉得这件作品的出现也非常的合适。Yeah, I mean, I'm a big fan of Bitcoin as well, and、uh, I'm doing a project right now which is based on、uh, Bitcoin. So much later than you, I'm late to the game.、Um, but I wanted to just ask a really simple and maybe very cute question.、Uh, but the, the the machine that is here is a is a Bitcoin miner as part of the show. How much value has it produced、uh, since 2011 in Bitcoin? 在一开始，这个机器就是非常廉价的，就是我就没有准备让它真的能够通过这个机器踩到矿。I think that's a really interesting point because Bitcoin, though it started as a possibility for digital money production, is now being understood as something that is much more fundamentally revolutionary because. The key thing that Bitcoin did、uh, is remove the possibility and the necessity for a third-party verification in an agreement. So, if you and I agree to do something, the code itself 
records and verifies it. And that has so much potential way beyond the idea of money. It's about institutions and it's about governance. So I think that's like one of the most beautiful things of that. And it also connects to hacking because cryptocurrencies were developed in a hacker context and Bitcoin being this most groundbreaking, world-changing idea um, coming from a hacker context is emblematic of the type of thought that we're trying to document and celebrate in this exhibition. Hacking as a, I mean, Bitcoin as a hack of the financial system and looking at this as a revolution or also form of innovation, I think it's an interesting jump to go to Jail Young's work. I mean, there are different, um, as we go along the exhibition, what's also what we're coming to realize is that there are really a lot of ping pongs that can be made in terms of associations with the different works. Behind us, we have Guo Xi's uh, projection, which reads um, evolution and revolution and shows this train track. Um, and then we have Jai Liang's uh, watercolor work which depicts a series of individuals throwing an egg. Do you mind sharing a few words about that work? Um, 对, 嗯，然后其实，在教大家如何我们更好的去扔这个臭鸡蛋。当我们抗议的时候，然后因为因为我觉得这个，嗯，因为我很多作品是跟，比如说跟文本有关系，跟跟书有关系，然后但是它和它和
uh, an expert in phenomenology and Husserl, um, appreciated by people like Paul Ricard, mm -hmm. migrated philosophy into curating a museum. So he's a museum director now and runs the Moderna Museum mm -hmm. in Stockholm. And he always says that in our age, philosophy has to migrate into mm -hmm. other fields. Philosophy migrates into you know, curating, philosophy migrates into mm -hmm. painting. Yeah. So I was very curious if you can tell us a little bit more about your background in philosophy and how you then migrated into painting. Um, uh, I think sometimes, if it's... Of course, this is very wrong, very wrong. It's just that, from a philosophy perspective, as a user, it's not a very direct way to influence an artist. But I... 通过呃身体力行，因为绘画是一种很传统的方式，他需要去呃一个个人，他不需要别人来帮助他，他一个个人去去印证他的他对艺术的看法。那这个时候就很像很像那个呃佛教里的那种修行，他是通过自己肉体的行动呃来印证一些东西，然后这个过程其实最后印证了我一些以前所看到的或者是呃所没有体会到的一些哲学。I think uh, painting is a very traditional the the I mean, art. So, so the artist is uh, it means you have to use the body to to do art. Kind of like didn't like the if you're a sculptor or anything else, you maybe you have the assistance or some factory can help you to to finish your job. But uh, the painter you have to do yourself. It's kind of like you know the old style, so old style. Like uh, you can prove some idea of the philosophy. Yeah, totally. Can I just say also that the painting that you show here um, that reflects these kind of things is like such a perfect example of how, uh, how to imagine resistance and questioning. And resistance and questioning is something that is so key to understanding things properly, you know, and, uh, and that's why it's an inspiration to Hackspace as well. Thank you. Uh, Li Liao, your work, Conception, Consumption from 2012 was also included at the triennial at the new museum in New York um, and in this exhibition also in talking about it earlier to some people who came to see the show of course it is striking to see that there is an iPad that's part of the installation can you tell us about your experience of working at Foxconn which is a company that produces Apple products <laughs> <It's very boring>. <laughs> okay <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Okay. I I say first, is that I think you are very cool. Then, I very thank the organizers for inviting me to participate in such a cool exhibition with such a cool exhibition and such a cool exhibition. Thank you very much. Thank you for letting us present your work in this exhibition. Well, thank you for letting us present your work in this exhibition. I mean, your experience is basically a hack. You've hacked into a company by infiltrating yourself into this uh, process and then working there for enough days in order to raise the funds for you to buy yourself an iPad. So in that sense, I mean, it really brings out another approach of the many facets of hacking which are being presented within this exhibition. So in that sense, your contribution is very crucial to this show. <laughs> yeah, you open source the experience of the worker, yeah. right? I mean, that is like the, that's an amazing gesture and I'm just such a huge fan of your work as well. So it's not about being... Uh, uh, lucky to be involved with us. It's 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 me being lucky to learn from you directly and see the work. Um, I'm such a fan. Uh, then, uh, so we're open sourcing cool here as well. Uh, because because I'm just because I'm just because I'm just because 生活周边比较小的平凡的一些事情，然后我去觉得有些荒诞的东西，我把它做大或者做怎么样，然后居然能跟你们这么酷的这种方向能在一个层面上，我是觉得非常的开心。也从另外一个层面，我特别的感谢艺术，让我穿透了这种阶层的隔离。我从一个所谓的下面的一个阶层，变得一个很高大上的阶层了。我非常感谢，对。Now, obviously, uh, we fully understand that for him, it must be 
boring to speak about this piece again and all over again because it's a piece which is so famous. Uh, so I think maybe it, it might be more interesting for him to tell us about very recent things. It, it would be great for us also to hear what he's working on at the very moment. In uh, Oh,我一般作品就是跟我自己生活相关的，就是比如说一二年我会跟我老婆去街上逛街，所以我做了，对，我说个原因，所以我做了跟消费跟富士康有关的这个作品，因为我去买东西了。然后这两年我一直待在
刚开始知道就是 Hank Space 的这个展览的这个主题和它的这个概念的时候，我觉得非常有有意思。然后山寨的这个主题，这个在我的创作当中，我是也一直在关注的。然后我把这个建筑和雕塑，嗯，以同样的尺寸叠加在一起的时候，你也可以说它们是相互入侵了，就是你也可以说它们是。变成了，就是建筑变成了雕塑，雕塑同时也变成了这个建筑。谢谢。嗯，然后就是，嗯，山寨的话，因为我选取的这些建筑，我比较喜欢的这种建筑风格，嗯，有一大部分是从那个日本的一个建筑风格，日本新城代谢派的建筑风格的这种模仿。然后我觉得，但是在这种模仿的过程当中，它会产生很多很有趣的点。我觉得也是，嗯，可能是中国特有的一种风格，嗯，嗯，但是我对山寨的这个理解，它不是一个贬义的，我觉得它是一个很中性的词，甚至它山寨本身，或者说你说这种误读，就是对于一个其他的观念的错误的理解，本身它会产生一种新的东西。She mentioned the Japanese architecture, indeed, when we visited, and of course. Uh, I was very interested in, uh, you know, you're mentioning uh, metabolism, because we made a, a whole uh, research with Rem Kolhas about six, seven years ago. I read that when, book. Yeah, when we visited. <laughs> I love that book. And we visited. They were all still alive at that time. They're very old. Kikutake, Kurokawa, etc., etc. And you know, if you think about that, the future often is invented with fragments from the past. I was, of course, very interested in you revisiting metabolism. Can you tell us a little bit? Where your interest、uh, in metabolism stems from, and what you do with it? 嗯嗯，这个这个经历也是我想说一下的，就是嗯，因为我不是建筑专业出身的，然后我的这个创作是从一种个人的这种趣味反推的，就是怎么说，就是我现在当时在北京租了辆车，做地毯式的拍摄，拍摄了大量的建筑的照片，然后从当中选出。我感兴趣的那那那种风格，差不多是从五环到一环，就是地毯式的把北京的建筑拍一遍，花了一个多月的时间。然后我从当中选出我感兴趣的，然后就是我发觉我感兴趣的是那些带有圆圆盘和圆柱形态的这些建筑，而这些建筑，我感觉是嗯受日本新型代代谢派的这个影响。嗯，然后比较有意思的一点是，就是这些建筑都是差差不多在一九八零年之后，就差不多是我出生之后，嗯，大概三十年间建建造的。然后呢，就是当时的中日关系还是不是那么，就是所以很多建筑师是不承认他的这些设计的这些建筑是受日本的这个影。风格的影响，也没有一本书会专门写这方面的东西。然后我感觉我是作为一个外行人，非建筑专业的外行，以这样一种方式做的一个田野调调查。然后最后这个观点也是一种很个人经验的这个观点。然后我读了那个就是汉斯和这个嗯库哈斯的那本《新陈代谢派的访谈录》之后。也觉得从当中找到了很多像解密一样，就是比如说几几几年，他们新陈代谢派的一个建筑师会到中国有一些交流。我从当中也觉得自己发现了，就是一个嗯、呃、事实吧，就是。Thank you very much. It's indeed super interesting because again in 1996, when we worked on Cities on the Move,、uh, we met Rem Kolhas in Hong Kong.、Uh, Was one of the first meetings we had starting the research for the exhibition, and he said, you know, in terms of understanding the urban mutations in China, it's very interesting to look at at,、uh, at metabolism. So it actually all again started in 1996. But Simon had actually a remark or a question. Oh, I just really love your paintings, and I love this idea、Thank、that you. you were talking about of how、um, the the metabolism reading and and the kind of way that those architects were using that idea was kind of a misinterpretation and kind of like a stylistic reading that was then kind of reinterpreted in in a way that wasn't really intended by the metabolism itself. 
And this idea of a fake, as you were saying, this idea of sh Shanzai, which is an inspiration to me, um, of, of fakes and of kind of versions of things um, actually uncovering ideas that you didn't know about and, and, and kind of breeding new ideas uh, is something that I think um, sits alongside Hackspace really, really well. Um, yeah, and the idea that kind of, uh, you know, Shenzhen, which is this kind of factory system which you were working within, um, is now kind of being rebranded um, uh, from the outside um, as a kind of place of innovation. Now, you know, this idea of copies uh, of, of copies of, of products has kind of often been seen in the past or been talked about, um, certainly in things that I've read as a kind of a weird negative thing. But now this idea is that um, the process of sharing information between factories which produces these kind of fake things is actually a process of open sourcing. And open sourcing the factory context is exactly why uh, Shenzhen is now um, the kind of leader in the factory world in a way. So I think, I don't know, your paintings kind of have that idea in them uh, beautifully explored kind of pictorially and, 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 and relates to this hack space concept very well. That could not be a more wonderful conclusion. Thank you so, so much to Ajayo to, and I try uh, to get it right, Chue Chi. Chue Chi. To um, <laughs> Liliao, uh, to Zai Liang, and of course also to Simon. And thanks to all of you. Thank you very, very much.